On this week's episode of the Marketing Expedition Podcast, I'm speaking with Eric Allen. Make sure you get that right. It's E-R-I-K Allen, in no relationship to me, even though we have the same last name. But Eric came from a broken home, and he beat his mom's boyfriend with a cast iron pan for hitting her when he was 13 years old. And he was jailed, and at 18, he was bankrupt at 21. He battled addictions, and he then gave his life to Christ in 2004. Now, breaking the chains of divorce, abuse, and addictions, he's been married for 16 plus years and sober for that same period of time. He was the host of two podcasts, and now he hosts The Eric Allen Show with over 350 combined episodes of both podcasts. He had a top-rated MMA podcast as well. And he helps MMA fighters and entrepreneurs get known and noticed online, and He also shares all about his morning routine and all the things that he's doing to be consistent and getting around to the right people, networking and podcasting. He gives so many different awesome podcast tips as well and just has done a lot of wonderful things with this podcast and you're good to hear more about that and all the special, awesome, interesting people that he's been able to have on his show and how he went about being able to do all of those things. So listen up, but first we need to talk about... Ibotta. It's the app that you get cash back on the groceries that you're already buying or that you want to buy. And all you do is you select the rebates in the Ibotta app and upload your receipt and then you get cash back. And they actually put it into your account. And then once you receive 20 bucks, you can put it into your PayPal account and get cash back. It's Legit, it's awesome. I've been able to use this for a long period of time and I've gotten a lot of cash back over the years. And it is all the different retailers, all the different grocery stores that you can imagine. And even if it's not listed, you can even get rebates on any grocery store that you are working with or you're shopping with, right? And it is all about the different types of products and services that you get that you can then submit your receipt for the rebates. Uh, I use it at Albertsons and Fred Meyer, and um, you can even use it when you get a lift ride, uh, if you need you know, transportation at Best Buy, Old Navy, all of these different places that you can use to get cash back and get rebates back. And sometimes they even make it to where you can use a coupon in the store and then get cash back. And sometimes you can get, even get free items. It's pretty cool. And um, when you also then refer other people to the, the app as well, after you use my link to get to your uh, Ibotta, then you can also get money back and get rewards for doing that as well. So go to peppershock.com slash offers and select the Ibotta app to get cash back. And now it's time for the marketing essentials moment. And today I wanted to talk about the ability to really enhance your marketing strategy and efforts by using visual content in your marketing. And I know we're talking about podcasts today, but you can also on podcasts use video to put it to YouTube and all the different places as well. But we know that video is ever growing in strength and how you can put it into your marketing strategy on all the different platforms. And I wanted to share a result that we, when we put together the new marketing trends for the new year event that we had, there are some statistics that I think are really important as marketers to understand and how you can use video to your benefit and to your client's benefit or to whatever brand that you are representing. But we know that more and more um, people are investing in marketing videos and you can use all kinds of different videos, live streaming to stories with videos and imagery, right? And we know that people will look at visual content more than they'll read text on a screen. And it's interesting because you can get better results, better traction, better engagement if you're using visual components, whether it's video or movement like an animated GIF or um, even if it's a visual picture, right? Using pictures of people will get you more uh, engagement and traction and, and views than than not, right? And we say, um, so one of the things that came out as a result of our research in doing the new marketing trends for the new year, um, we found that Cisco projects that global internet traffic from videos will make up 82% of all consumer internet traffic by the end of this year, and we're in 2022. of YouTube viewers watch video for help with a problem that they're having with a hobby, study, or job. 
and that's from Think With Google. Now, if you have ever YouTubed anything, you know, how-to videos on anything, then you know what we're talking about, right? Um, and YouTube obviously is the biggest leading source of video content um, globally. So it's at 83%, whereas Facebook is second at 76%, and that's from HubSpot. And video streaming has increased significantly in the past several years. The live streaming platforms Twitch saw a year-over-year growth of 14.3% and boasted up to 1.64 billion watches, uh, watch hours per month. And that's from eMarketer and The Verge. So you can see that video is completely overtaking what we're doing on the internet. Another interesting factoid is that video on Facebook is not always watched with audio, so you'll want to make whatever content you're producing audio agnostic, as I call it, meaning that you are able to understand what's happening in the video even with the audio turned down. So if you're using images or graphics, uh, text over the screen, or subtitles, right? Subtitles are hugely important now. To also be inclusive so that people who can't hear, even if they wanted to turn the audio up, they can still understand what's going on in your video. And we know that it's increasing. And the other thing that's really starting to increase more too is VR, so virtual reality, right? And augmented reality. And people are using it even more. And now it's starting to have marketing opportunities in VR for business. And it's the spending on VR for business is expected to reach $9.2 billion. Really, the business use is outpacing its use for leisure. So that's from Finances Online. And a quarter of the VR users believe it has strong potential for brands and marketers. And that's from Global Web Index. And really, I think that the important thing here is to understand, you know, what what you can do as a marketer, how, how you can get your brand in some type of virtual reality or augmented space. And 64% of consumers say that VR has the most potential in gaming, while 52% recognize its potential in film and TV. So again, it's something that you want to continue to learn more about and strategize on how you would get your product or your service mentioned or endorsed or shown or linked back to when people are going through a virtual reality experience, right? I can just give you a, a personal example. I used iBuyDirect to be able to purchase my eyeglasses and I wanted to see what I would look like. And of course, it's all online. So I took a picture of myself. I added it to the app. And then I could swap out the glasses as if they were on my face already and what I would look like with those glasses. So uh, I wanted to make sure that the glasses that I purchased weren't going to make my face look too round or, you know, too square and if the color would work and all that kind of thing. So again, that's another example of how businesses can use it. Maybe you have a baseball cap that you want to sell. What would it look like if I wore that cap on my head, right? So just thinking about, you know, different applications, how you can use the augmented reality tools that will help you in your business. Visualize what people are doing, especially if you are a traditional brick and mortar store and you want people to buy from you. So now you need to become a click and mortar <laughs> and online and, you know, they need to try before they buy, right? So they can see what they're going to try before they buy. And uh, so any ways that you can replace the actual reality with virtual reality, right? So anyway, just thinking about the content that you're going to put out there and what kinds of things you're going to do to attract people's attention, uh, how you're going to use the content. Here's another interesting, fun little tidbit for you. People following directions with text and illustrations do 323% better than people following directions without illustrations. So you can see the importance of having a visual component to your marketing strategy and plan and all the things that you're doing. All right, without further ado, let's get to this interview with Eric Allen. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast, an auditory journey through the latest in marketing, branding, and advertising. Now, here's your Marketing Expedition Guide, Ray Allen. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Allen. I'm the president and CEO of Peppershock Media and the founder of the Marketing Expedition Community. And today's guest, we have Eric Allen. No relationship, even though we've got the same last name, but we are both from Idaho, right? That's true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you, you, you said you grew up in Washington, right? I did. Yeah. I grew up in Tri-Cities, Washington. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. I am a 
Idaho, hashtag Idaho, born and raised in Idaho, but I did spend three years in Seattle. So okay. there's there's my Washington connection. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So yeah, Eric, I uh, interesting story you have here. I want you to share a little bit more about you and your background and just share with the audience. Uh, and of course, we're going on a marketing journey, but I always like to know more about our you know guests that we have. So give us what you got. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I, I grew up in Tri Cities, Washington, and and uh, I grew up in what I thought was a typical household. You know, went to Sunday school, played little league. Uh, my dad would take my best friend Dave and I and throw us in big dumpsters behind stores on Saturday mornings and say, "Go find treasure." That was like a typical fun Saturday morning, and uh, so we would do that. And then my parents got divorced when I was 11 years old. I had never heard that word, never knew of anybody that had gotten a divorce. It was a kind of a shock to the system. And my mom ends up getting together with a guy pretty quick afterwards that was very physically abusive. So I remember him coming over and he'd smack around all the time. And, you know, I remember like times being outside of the house, looking through the bedroom window and he'd be hitting her with a cordless phone when those were a thing, you know, and cops would show up. My mom would never press charges. And then in the middle of my eighth grade year, they decided to move myself, my sister, who's four, year, four years younger than me. And then they had a baby together, who was just a couple months old, uh, to Stevensville, Montana, small town population, maybe 1200 at the time. And it was five acres. They rented this house on these five acres and it was right in the Bitterroot Valley, beautiful by the Bitterroot River there. And this house that they rented had three bedrooms. It was one for them, one for my brother who's a couple months old and one for my sister who's four years younger than me. And they said, Eric, you can live in the garage. So I literally had this half of the garage with a plastic tarp down the middle of the garage. And that was my room. And luckily I had a fireplace on my half of the garage to keep me semi warm in the winter, but that was where I stayed. And you know, the abuse didn't stop. It, actually got worse because we were further away from the police. And so I remember there was a night when I was 13 years old and they came home arguing, wasn't anything different than any other night. And, you know, they, uh, as I was brushing my teeth behind me was the kitchen to the pantry to the garage. And in, it was in that pantry area where I turned around the corner and I saw him on top of my mom. And there was one punch after that, I just boom, 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 hit her in the face. I'm like, man, I got to get this guy off. And so I walked up behind him. I grabbed a cast iron pan and I swung as hard as I could and I split the back of his head open. And he turned around and as he turned around, he said, what then? I took another swing and I split his forehead open. And it was at that moment that I actually fell over and he stood up over me and he was starting to yell. My mom jumps up, lands like six punches in a row. There's blood spot on the wall. Cops show up, take him to jail for the night. And it uh, doesn't, you know, my mom doesn't press charges. And the next day I was kicked out of my house. I had three months left in my freshman year of high school. My mom uh, uh, basically had me go live with my buddy Forrest and I slept on hardwood floors every morning and We'd walk to school and that sent me on this path of destruction for the next 10 years of my life, going to jail. Uh, yeah. By the time I'm 18, uh, by the time I'm 21, I was $28,000 in debt. Between the ages of 18 and 21, I moved 21 times and became addicted to drugs and alcohol and lived this rock star lifestyle without being a rock star for a bit. And, you know, and then in 20, uh, 2004, I, my life got drastically changed. I, I was working at Starbucks. A girl walked in and invited me to a church event. And for me, it was just what I needed. I was in this depression and didn't have any friends. And um, I think it was in that moment that God started to plant the seed in me because I ended up knowing all these guys. I you know, moved to Seattle and uh, Easter morning, 2004, I woke up surrounded by a bunch of guys after a night of party. And I felt God saying, man, you're done. And um, I quit in that moment, cold turkey, drugs, drinking cigarettes, everything, and called that girl up who invited me to that church event and said, hey, thanks for inviting that church event. Maybe uh -huh. I'll sit at Starbucks. And a month later, we we're dating. And now we've been married for 17 years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. What a journey. I mean, I'm just curious, like what happened to your mom? I mean, did, did yeah. she survive that or, you know, is she still with him? Like what happened? She, and she did stay with him for a few more years and then, um, got together with a couple of the people and, you know, and, and now she's down in Texas with, I don't know what number of husband or fiance or whatever oh it is now. So yeah. Something yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But she's at least okay. I mean, she's, you know, Got through she that. is. Oh. Yep. She got through that for sure. Yep. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, down in Texas, my sister lives in Texas with her three kids. And then well, my brother, who's now, gosh, 28 or something like that. I've talked to him for probably four or five years. He lives out in the Seattle area. So, so your now wife is the one who walked into Starbucks and just really literally kind of just turned your life around. Absolutely. Yeah. I've always said that she's like my angel and, um, you know, she doesn't even drink coffee. She was in there just drinking tea and I was the night manager, you know, and it turns out that we're on our honeymoons and this is like before you needed like your passport. And so we were looking at our birth certificates and I was like, Hey, what time were you born? It's so like 1 41 PM. Like I was born at 1 41 PM. So we're both <laughs> born at exactly the same minute, different days, different years with the exact same minutes. So it's kind of 
Oh, that's great. Oh my goodness. So, okay, let's, uh, let's fast forward. You're, you're doing well, you're, you're doing podcasts and you're, you know, t tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now with your life. I mean, after everything has turned around and, yeah. and, uh, you've gotten through some pretty horrific times and now tell us more. Yeah. So I have, I mean, my kids are uh, 12 and eight or almost 12. And uh, my oldest is a daughter and, you know, my wife and I, when we said I do, we meant it. And, and we decided that we were going to break those chains of addiction, abuse, rejection, uh, and divorce that came from, you know, our parents. And, you know, I think between our parents and there was, you know, I think 12 different, you know, father figures involved and mom figures involved, right. As we were growing up, but we just said we weren't going to do that. So new legacy starting with our kids. And so here we are 17 years married this year in 2022 and, and just stoked. And uh, so I do podcasts, like you mentioned, my podcast is the Eric Allen show. And I've been podcasting since 2017. I had another podcast called the top rated MMA show where I talked with fighters and I just stopped that run in December of 2021 after 265 shows, wow. uh, really just started to focus on the business side. And so I'm about 140 episodes in on, on my business side, but been blessed to speak with guys like Ed Milet and Brad Lee and Bedris Koulian, uh, Tim Story, Dan Caldwell, Jim Rookie Morris, and you know tons of other amazing people. And, and it's just been a fun journey. And so I really try to keep my shows to 30 minutes so I can keep people engaged and then just really hit them hard with the story of, you know, I want people to understand that I'm just talking to real people. So I really focus on like, where did they grow up? What was childhood like to what they do to get to where they're at? What are they doing right now? And, and what do they have coming up? And that's really my focus. I talk with entrepreneurs, world changers, and success-minded people. And is the podcast your number one priority? Is this all that you do? Or do you have other things that you do as well? I still work a full-time job. Yeah. So I still do that on top of everything. Um, I, I get up at 4 a.m. six days a week. I'm big on morning routine and, and really time management is huge for me. So for me, if I open my eyes in the morning, it's a goal of mine to open my eyes every day. So if I open my eyes, that's a win. I'm getting all yeah. ready. Yeah. Right. And so I have to acknowledge that, you know, and I say, man, Jesus, thank you for another day. I get to see and hold and hug my family. And then immediately jump out of bed and I make my bed. There's two wins in 15 seconds. So I've already started building the momentum of wins and stacking those wins in the morning. And mentally I go, man, now I'm, I'm ready. I'm on fire. I'm ready to you know, get things going. And so I get up to my office. I've got a vision wall that I created my office with quotes and pictures of the property that I want and my family. And I just speak out loud to it. And I just manifest things that I want in my life. And then I sit down and pray. And for me, prayer is very gratitude driven. So it's very thankful for you know, things I've gotten through, things that I have, you know, being debt free and, and hopefully just being able to make an impact on the world. And so that's a big focus of mine. I do that early on because if I can work on my personal development, work on myself in those early morning hours, I'm not eating into family time. And then come five o'clock, I really just set a goal to turn off the phone by six o'clock and not have anything to do with that except for my family. You know, I want to be very focused and present with my family for the rest of the evening. And you live in a, one of the most beautiful areas in Idaho, in, in northern Idaho, in Coeur d'Alene. So there's lots to do there, right? <laughs> Very much. Yeah. I love Coeur d'Alene. We love hitting up Tubbs Hill, walking down to the lake and things like that. And so, um, yeah, it's fun. I coach baseball. So I've been coaching my son's baseball team for the last four years. And so getting ready for winter camp here in just a couple of weeks. And then the season starts in April. So we're, we're prepping up for that right now. I guess we better edit that part out. Idaho is awful. You don't want to come here. You don't want to move to Idaho. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, Idaho has one of the one of the top ranked places to live here. And, and I think uh, it has something to do with all the four seasons and just the outdoors and the aspect of being able to have kind of the rural, but also big city, you know. So actually, what brought you back to Idaho? Because you were in Washington, right? Yeah, I, so I, I grew up in Tri-Cities. I moved to yeah. Seattle out of high school, lived there for 15 years. And uh, my wife and I had bought a house in 2006 and the, probably the worst time that you could ever buy a house. We thought we were <laughs> being smart. And we ended up short selling that thing in 2014. We just wanted a change. We wanted out of the rain. We wanted out of the, you know, uh, we both come from crazy families. And so we said, if we moved to Idaho, then no one can just show up at our door one day and say, hey, I was in the neighborhood. And so that was kind of our idea. And we came here not knowing anybody. You know, I had just gotten a, a job, literally like I was flying out of Boise and one guy called me. I left the airport with a taxi. It said, I'm going down. I've got 45 minutes, bud. And then I got to get back on a plane. And that's how we ended up moving to Idaho. 
Wow. That's awesome. So tell me, because you've you've done podcasts now for even before they became cool because of the pandemic, right? I mean, I, I, I can relate to that. I've been doing podcasts for seven years, just off and on sporadically. And then pandemic hit and it was like, okay, now we're doing it every week because we've just had so much traction and, and people wanting to be on. And, and, and uh, you know, I'll tell you, I must admit, when the pandemic happened, I thought podcasts were going to decline because people usually listen to them when they're commuting or, you know, they're out and about, whatever. But boy, it was the opposite completely true. Even though people were commuting from their couch to their kitchen, they were still listening and absorbing as much content as possible. I want to know from you, having podcasts for, for so long, like what are some of the most memorable interviews and moments that you've had, things that you've learned, things that you've done because of this podcaster's life that we have. Yeah. You know, podcasting for me, it was something that I wanted to do just to ask fighters, why do you want to get in a cage and get punched in the face? Like that was why I started. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was in a walk-in closet for almost my first hundred episodes. I was literally uploading to YouTube, taking the link and sharing it on Facebook. And that was it. And then somebody said, well, how do I listen on Apple? And I said, I don't even know what that is. Like, how, what do I do? You're yeah. right. And so I started researching, like, how do I get yeah. my show on Apple? And you're right. 2020 was like this year where I thought maybe podcasting might take off. I was just a few years in. And in 2021 of January, or January 2021, my show actually ended up ranking 102 on the Apple US charts for entrepreneurial. Yeah. And then I went on a podcast tour in 2021, where I set a goal to be a guest on 100 podcasts yeah. on top of releasing 100 episodes, uh, ended up on 117 interviews last year. And it grew, All right. yeah, you know, it was, it was all about like getting my name out there. And, mm -hmm. and, and so not only like being consistent, but I think my most memorable, you know, interviews and things like that have been Ed Milet for sure. Uh, when I came across that guy in 2018, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's his values, everything is line, aligning with me. And I really manifested myself uh, to be able to meet him. Uh, and I won the max out challenge in 2018 that he issued on Instagram, which landed me a phone call with him, which changed my life forever. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was, I was able to record that and release that. It was episode 12 of my show, you know? So here, I just started this brand new business podcast. I'd already talked to Sean Whalen and then it yeah. was Ed Milet. And then it just opened up the, the doors for Tim story was another guy that I really loved talking to, uh, Jim Morris, the Jim, the rookie Morris, the movie, the rookie is based off him. I've had him on my show twice, probably yes. one of the coolest guys ever. Uh, Ken Shamrock has been on and, uh, you know, Greg Reed is another favorite of mine and it just, the list has been going on and on. And I think I've just been really blessed to, to speak to some truly amazing people. Uh, but I think that those are the ones that really made that big impact on me. So when you went on this podcast to explain to people who aren't familiar with that, I mean, yeah. did you physically go places or did you just mean that you were on other people's shows across the country or world even? Uh, yeah, both. So uh, if I could go locally, then I would. Um, uh -huh. One of the shows I flew down to Las Vegas and I was on Bradley's podcast last year, uh, you know, and then I, I was on some local podcasts here in Coeur d'Alene area, but the majority of them were just online. I think there might have been three days or four days, maybe last year that I was not on a podcast. Um, I was either interviewing someone or I was on a podcast last year. And so um, at least a hundred and something of my own shows on top of doing the 117 guest spots. And really it's just was... Uh, one, I love networking. I love connecting with people and especially other podcasters because we kind of have the same craziness of like understanding people's stories <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. So it was so fun to just do this tour and just like get on as many shows as I could. And I got to see how people do things. Oh man, I want to do that on my show. I want to implement that, you know? And then there were some shows where I was on where I was like, oh my gosh, I would never do that. Right. Um, but it was just this fun engagement of just getting a new, getting to uh, meet and know just a ton of people from all over the world. Right. Right. Okay, so two questions for you. Hang on to that, what you never want to do. I'll ask you that in a second because that's important. But first, before we move away from the podcast tour, what advice do you have to others who would want to get on other people's podcasts? Like, I know you got on to mine, which is great, but how do you get on a hundred other podcasts out there? You have to be consistent. Um, and people think you have to be some big guru to be on guests or be on podcasts. Right. And you have to be this millionaire guy and have some crazy story. And you really don't because see, we're all passionate about something in life, whether that's reading or art or, you know, sewing or podcasting, whatever it is. And there's so many groups on Facebook that you could just literally search in their podcast groups and, and post in there. Hey, here's what I'm passionate about. 
I'd love to be a guest on your show. And you'll probably have 10, 15 people respond to that saying, hey, I would love to have you on my show because there's other people that have that same passion that are doing podcasting. And so that's really the best way to get your name out there, I think, and not only market your own show, but to get to meet cool people. And then other people that heard me as a guest on other shows then reached out to me and said, I heard you on this show. I want you on my show. And so it just continued to grow. Uh, yeah. So I think if, if you want to get your story out there and I'm 42, I didn't share my story till I was 39 years old. I held on to that. And I think if, if you're strong enough to be able to share your story of whatever it is that you're passionate about, right. I think that will connect with somebody out there and there probably could be a podcaster and that could, that could open up tons of doors. And I mean, podcasting has opened up a, a ton of doors, um, amazing relationships, you know, they got me trips, you know, I mean, it's just been an awesome journey. Absolutely. And you're right about being able to promote your podcast on other people's show and same, I mean, I've done several now and I continue, same thing. If somebody hears me on their podcast, oh, I want you on mine and vice versa. So it just kind of has this nice ripple effect, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, okay. I want to know after having done a hundred episodes and being on other people's podcasts, you mentioned what not to do. So share, since we're on this marketing journey, if somebody happens to be a podcast guest, what do you think maybe a, a handful of, of things and tips that you could give of what not to do? <laughs> yeah, I think as, if, if you're the guest, right, always, always be on time, never be late. Um, always have headphones plugged in and, and a good microphone to use. Uh, I think if you're the host, then be on time. I, I was on quite a few shows where the host decided to, you know, show up 10 minutes, 15 minutes late. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm about to jump off this line here because you're not showing up. Right. Uh, so I think, you know, things not to do as, as a podcast host is, you know, uh, don't be late. Uh, I think it's always professional to actually get the person's name right uh, that you're talking to. Uh, that happened a couple of times. Um, also spelling their name correctly when they go to release the show. Uh, very important. I, I think probably four or five shows that I was on last year released uh, my name on their podcast with that E-R-I-C. And I was like, uh, dude, that's not how I spell my name. You know, and it's like it. You don't want to be the pain in the butt and go, hey, can you fix that? But it's like, that's promoting somebody else. It's not me. And so, yeah. you know, I think you definitely want to make sure that you get stuff correct. Well, especially since our last name is Allen, both of us, yes. everybody, I mean, you have that all, yeah. So a different Eric Allen, if it's not spelled right, I could absolutely see how it's, you know, not going to tag correctly or anything. And, and, and my name too, like R-H-E-A, no one can spell that right. So you're right. <laughs> and that might take me all the way back to high school because there was a kid that was a year behind me that his name was also Eric Allen, but it was spelled with a C. And yeah. him and I would get called into the principal's office for other people, you know, for doing each yeah. other's bad, like, you know, <laughs> skipping class. Right. And I'd be like, no, that's not me. That's the other Eric Allen. And I'd have to go get the other guy. Right. So like, I think it all, it's like this memory that goes back to high school for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. The Eric with the C, he's trouble. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. What else? What are some other things that you picked up along the way that would be helpful to our audience as well? Yeah, I think being consistent. If you're a podcast host, be consistent. There's a lot of people that like to start podcasts. And, you know, I don't know what the the, the actual statistic is, but I've heard that like, you know, 95, 98% of podcasters never make it to episode 100. And even more than that, like don't even make it to episode 50. And so I think if you're a podcaster or you want to start a podcast, just get consistent with it. You know, just pick a date and start releasing every Friday at 7 a.m. like I do. Right. Or, or pick a date that works best for you. You know, um, and I think those are those things that help you be successful as a podcaster is because people start to rely on that time. You start to put out your show at the same time over and over and then they're going to look forward to it. You know, like every Friday, Eric dropping his new show at 7 a.m. And it used to come out at nine and I just changed it. So after two years. I know I, I changed the time because I went back to a solo show instead of doing two. So that was the one change that I did. Mm -hmm. But I think being consistent is is really big with it when it comes to podcasting. What what day do you say you release yours? Fridays at 7 a.m. Pacific. Okay. It's interesting how yeah, we've played around with different time frames to see which consistently, you know, in our category people listen to. And it's interesting to see the differences in different areas and where you're at and you know, what people in marketing do versus, you know, a golf show or, you know, so that's definitely a, a good tip to like understand when your podcast is going to get the most downloads at what time of day, what day of the week, all of those things, right? 
Yep. And I think one other thing I'd throw out there too, is if, if you are a podcaster and you're trying to book guests on your show, uh, never send a templated email message, uh, you know, like where you're just changing the first name, but you have the rest of it, like already pre-printed, uh, like, you know, inviting someone to your show, I think for me, it should be personalized. And so that's the way that I book all my guests. I literally book 99% of my guests through Instagram DM. And what I do is I literally pull out my phone and I do a 30 second video. That's it. 30 seconds. Don't, don't go longer. And I literally just talk right into the camera and uh, whoever I'm speaking to, Hey, Ed, it's Eric. I'm out in Coeur d'Alene. I saw you just released your notebook. Let's get you on the podcast, promote that thing. Let's make it happen. We'll talk soon, man. Thanks. 30 seconds. I send it via DM. I don't send any text. I just sent a video and 98% of my guests, 99% of my guests have been booked through Instagram DM oh, that way. That. Yeah. And it's quick and simple and easy and you don't have to sit there and try to text it all out and yeah, video play. And I'm starting to get a lot more voice messages through Facebook messenger. Are you noticing okay. that too? Where people uh, I do get messages? some of those. Okay. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. It probably is lack of my knowledge around the technology of just doing vo voice stuff mm -hmm. um, because I'll try to like, I've tried to do it before and then I run out of time because I'm a mm -hmm. talker. Right. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I'm like, I, and when I do the 30 second videos, I usually don't get it in the first four or five takes, right? Yeah. Like I'll just, usually I'm like, oh crap, I went over or I didn't get my message in time. So <laughs> I'll have to redo it. I'm glad I'm not the only one who has to redo that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, so that's, that's a big thing for me is, is, you know, I just have to make sure that it's right. And I think maybe I'm, I'm almost worse. I'm my own worst critic. Right. So I want to make sure that it, it sounds perfect and I'm promoting them and, you know, honoring them in that pitch and not sounding like, Hey, just come on my show. Just so you can come on my show. Like I really genuinely want to help them out, yeah. you know? And so that's, a, that's a big thing that I think has helped me uh, book the guests that I have been able to book. Okay, so what are some podcasts aside from, of course, the Marketing Expedition podcast and your own podcast that you listen yeah. to? What What's something that you really enjoy listening to that uh, you think others should listen to as well, in addition to ours, of course? <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'm a big fan of Ed Milet. His show, I think it drops every Tuesday, but I could drop a new one this morning. Um, so big fan of Ed Milet, big fan of Tony Robbins. Yeah. And so anytime that he's on a show, I, I have to go listen to it. So Ed Milet. Uh, Tony Robbins, Inky Johnson's got his own podcast. I love Inky Johnson. Um, Lewis Howe's got a great show. Uh, and so those guys are the shows that I really rotate in and, and, and listen to those guys. Eric Thomas is another guy that I love to listen to. Um, you know, th those guys, I could sit there in the morning while I'm making breakfast for my kids and, and have like, you know, while they're still sleeping, because I, I get up super early and I'm doing that. But while I'm, you know, cooking breakfast and they're still sleeping, I have one of their shows on or, or an yeah. interview maybe that they did. Those are the guys that really make that impact on me. So do you mostly just listen to books or do you read books? Ah, that's a great question. I do not have a, an account for Audible, so I read a lot of books. I, I didn't read as many as I wanted to in 2021, but this year I've really set a, a goal to to finish as many books I can. And I think I'm on my third book already for the month or for the year. So yeah, I'm excited. Good. What are you currently reading? I am reading a book. Uh, actually, I have it right here. Sorry. It's called The Self-Esteem Regime. And it's actually by Clarissa Burt. Um, I met Clarissa just a couple weeks back uh, down in July, uh, or excuse me, uh, a few weeks back, mid-January, I was at a conference called Prosperity Camp by Greg Reed. And she was there. And she... Mm. Most people may not know the name. I didn't know the name until I met her in person, got to chat with her. But she was actually the main queen in the movie Never Ending Story. Uh, so she, that was her. And she's a super former supermodel and Italian actress and things like that. I know who you're talking about as soon as you said that. I mean, uh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So she's super cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to be talking with her on my show here this week. Uh, oh, so fantastic. super stoked to have her on. So it'll, her episode won't drop for uh, probably a month and a half or two months, but I'm yeah. uh, really stoked to have her on the show. Great. That's great. So just a couple more questions for you. Where do you see kind of the next, you know, six months, five years, 10 years? Like, what are your aspirations? What do you want to see happen with the show, with where you're at now and what you're doing? I'm going to continue to do the, the podcast. I really see myself for, um, continuing to just put this out weekly. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I work full time, but my goal is, is to be a full time entrepreneur. And so I work right now, even with brands, they'll send me their products and I do content videos for them, how to box openings, explainer videos. Nice. Uh, so I do that with a lot of brands. I work with a lot of brands on the sponsorship of my show. Uh, so give them some exposure. And so I work with, you know, brands that want to get like i said exposure or sometimes people want to reach out and they want to be a guest on my show uh i 
used to take every person that reached out to me and said, Hey, I want to be on your show when I first started. And it just got to be a, a craziness of, of yeses. And so I decided to stop doing that. And so uh, now people will reach out and they'll, they'll actually pay to be on my show. So um, I do charge a fee if people reach out and kind of an inbound guest spot and say, Hey, I, I want to be on your show. Perfect. I've got a wish list that I'm working through, but if you want to be on my show, then I'll, I'll charge you and then you can jump the line and, and be on my show. And so that's, that's helped me quite a bit over the last couple of years and, um, you know, working with brands, like I said, and, and just doing that. So five, six years, I think full-time podcaster, full-time content creator. I'm a seller on Fiverr. I also do laser engraving. So I'm coming all over the place. So yeah. yeah, so I I bought a laser engraver a couple of years back, and I just do small wood pieces, and uh, that's just been a fun thing that I do. And so that's yeah. just another side income. I'm big on having, you know, seven plus in stream, income See. streams, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. So Eric, tell me when you first were able to get a sponsor for your show, what was it like? Did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? How did you know what to charge? All of that good little nuggets there that other people may need to understand so that they can do the same. Yeah, I had no idea what, about the rates to charge. Um, <laughs> I def definitely undercharged, and, and and that has gone up quite a bit since I first started. But there's a website that I highly recommend. It's called Podcorn. Um, Pop corn. It's not popcorn. It's Podcorn. And you can actually go find companies and other podcasts that want to sponsor podcasts sure. on there. And so you can go on there. You can say, you know, they'll say, "Here's my budget," and you can say, "Cool, I can put a 30 second spot or a one minute spot on my show." You can do pre-roll, mid-roll, or you know, interview them type things, and you can throw an offer out to them, and sometimes you get accepted. And that's why I got my first podcast sponsor, or my pay, my first paid sponsor, and it was actually Podcorn that sponsored two shows. Um, nice. And so I thought, well, if if I can get those guys, and I can probably get yeah. some other brands. And so I just started, you know, really like I said, being consistent, and I would catch the attention of other brands. And so a lot of my sponsors have reached out to me through Instagram. Um, I work with some clothing brands, some guys that I know personally. I also do a swap with massage uh, masseuse place out here. So oh, hey, they, give, they give yeah. my wife and I a massage each month. I'll give them some free sponsorship, right? So yeah. uh, sometimes it's fun just to, you know, not not monetize, but sometimes we can just do a collaboration where, you know, it's a swap right. for for yeah. Uh, stuff. But yeah, I think it's really important. And I try not to make my show super sponsory, you mm -hmm. know, so to speak, but I like to work with, you know, four or five companies and not everybody's going to buy the same package. So some of my packages allow a 30 or a 60 second ad, and some of them just want to have their logo on the website and at the pre-roll, you know? Right. And so I, I love mentions, work with brands like or mentions. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's what we have like affiliate links that we mention, And then, you know, it sends those to the link and that helps too. Yep, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, last question. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Fun, fame, or fortune? What would you choose if you could only pick one? Fun for me. You oh, know. Awesome. <laughs> I, I think fortune is something that will fade, and fame is fake for the most part, you know. And I think for me, I just I'm all about fun, man. I like I like playing games with my kids and I love just going out on adventures and you know what I'm cool with living in a trailer on property for the rest of my life I haven't convinced my wife that but that's <laughs> something that I would enjoy doing is just living on the trailer and having you know 40 acres right but I haven't convinced her to do that yet okay I lied one more question you get to pick two this time better faster cheaper uh for me better I, i'm kind of a, a a tech snob so i like to spend money on that stuff that's kind of my thing where i you know that's where it eats into most of my money so um i'm better I, I like that better when it comes to that now i'm cheap when it comes to clothing right i have about 15 <laughs> of these black shirts and i just rotate them through and that works for me that's my daily attire right so like um you know i work for a swag company as my full-time job so you know every quarter i get to spend some money and i just yeah. replenish my black shirts every quarter and so i have you know 15 20 black shirts and so i know what i'm wearing every day i'm very easy going when it comes right. to that so yeah one less decision you have to make in a day, right? If you just have the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Black shirt and shorts and my slippers. That's my, my work attire for the last five years. So. <laughs> and, 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 um, I have to ask too, your beard, did, did that come out of, uh, COVID? You have, he has, for those of you listening, he has a really long beard. And so I'm just curious, was that a, a COVID related or have you always had that? 
I've had the beard for about six years. Okay, so uh, my before, daughter before COVID. <laughs> yeah, before COVID. What <laughs> happened was when I was first married, I would grow the beard out for one month, just one random month out of the year, and then shave it off. My wife would fall back in love with me. And then when my daughter was probably four or five, maybe six years old, I shaved it off and she said, Dad, I, I missed the beard. And I was like, never shaving that again. Yeah. <laughs> so I started just keeping it going. And it's actually turned into a moneymaker for me. So brands will like beard brands will send out, yes. you know, products that say, Hey, can you do a video for me? And, and I charge, you know, uh, yes. I charge a hundred bucks per 30 seconds of video. And I usually do four or five, six minutes of video each month. And so what happens is they send me this stuff and then they'll go and post it on Amazon. My wife will get a random text from her friend saying, Hey, I was shopping for my husband and I saw your husband on Amazon. So my wife jokes and says, you're Amazon famous. So I'm somewhere okay. out there on Amazon. <laughs> So you got a little fame going on there too. <laughs> Fun, fame, and fortune. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Any last things that you'd like uh, anybody to know about or how to reach you or anything, you know, plug your show, just share kind of your last thoughts here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Eric Allen Media, it's E-R-I-K. You can hire me for speaking, laser engraving, video content, co you know, creation. My podcast is just the Eric Allen Show. It drops every Friday at 7 a.m. on all video and audio formats. And two things that I just love to be able to mention is one, I think the world would be a better place if we all just quit watching the news. And two, if we just like stop judging people, just love people where they're at. You know, I think for me, like it doesn't matter who you voted for, or what your stance is on vaccination or whatever. I just want to love you where you're at. And so I think if, if people could just love people where they're at and turn off the news, man, the world would be a way better place. Thank you, Eric. Really appreciate you. And for those of you listening, you know, the best thing that you can do for both of us is to give us reviews on our podcasts on both of us and then, you know, share it with others. If you feel like you've gotten value from this and, and also listening to Eric's show too, share it with others. That's like the best compliment as podcasters that we can get, right, Eric? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Until next time, everybody enjoy the journey. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Want to continue the journey? Don't miss out on new episodes. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more.